I'm Angela Bobier. I'm the culture manager at Bacchus Page House Museum. This is the or A Seniors Life in the Talbot Settlement Oral History Project, and we have Colin McGugan, who we are speaking with today. Um, Colin, if you want to introduce, just name yeah. when you were born, where you were born, yeah. the so, biographical information. So actually, I'm uh, Colin McGugan. Oh, so. yeah, I say it wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody does. It's yeah. one of these things where uh, it's sort of local pronunciation. My family, mm -hmm. even though it's spelled G-U-G-A-N, is properly pronounced McGugan. So it's a, it's a um, and it's spelled that way in some of the old records and on the graves in uh, Black Cemetery. Mm -hmm. It's spelled that way. So yeah, I've been my family's been in the Talbot settlement since 1819. Uh, they came over first year they settled in Alboro, then they got a better farm in Dunwich. So they moved there in 1820 and stayed there. And then my that was my great 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 grandfather, my great Great grandfather Neil moved to Southwold in 1851 or so. Uh, there's an interesting story with that. My uh, great grandfather was 11 years old at the time. They moved to this um, log cabin on the site of now what's the uh, Green Lane landfill site. So, and but the family needed groceries, so they left this 11 year old in this cabin while the rest of the family went into St. Thomas to get groceries. And he spent the night with wolves howling around the uh, cabin there. So. It, so this was a story he told for the rest of his life, so even when he was sort of in his uh, 70s or whatever, he was telling his grandchildren this story. So, and so did, did he sound mm -hmm. proud of himself or still a bit traumatized? I think he was traumatized by it. I think it was a, one of the scariest things of his life. So this was, sort of tells you what, this was in the you know, 1850s, north part of Southwold was still a fairly wild country then. So it was, a, it was an interesting story for them. But, yeah. yeah. And any other, mm -hmm. uh, since, since you mentioned wolves, um, did he or anyone else in your family talk about other wildlife that was around? Uh, maybe one, <laughs> things that we don't have now? Um, no, they actually they were big into hunting, but they didn't, didn't really mention anything other than the wolves. Like there was, yeah. You know, I think there was sort of rattlesnakes around too in the early days, but never heard much about them. No. Mm -hmm. And now we have neither. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Not not in our areas. So. No. Okay. Um, and what do you talk more about you? Um, where when when you came into the picture and where and yeah, yeah early so, life. So my family was in Southwold. Um, so my uh, sort of generations there. I grew. I was born at uh, St. Thomas and lived at just north of Payne's Mills mm -hmm. on one of the family farms there. So I went to originally went to school at Payne's Mills. My first teacher was Annie Isabel McCollum who's now Annie Isabel Tate, so that's where she started teaching school. So, okay, yeah. and that school, um, if you just want to describe yeah. where it's, that would be now. Um, it's, it's right on Talbot Line, I guess Highway 3, what used to be Highway 3, it's on Talbot Line. <laughs> but it crossed from what used to be all this farm equipment, but yes. <laughs> it's, not, it's not there anymore. The, the row of trees, oh, there's a house there now, there's a row of maple trees along the side of the lot that my uh, uh, great grandfather planted there because he was one of the trustees of that school. Of the school, okay. Yeah. And which um, I'm trying to think what the name of the closest street is that goes. Well, there's Payne's Mills Road, and the, there's another. Um, but it, well, the sales barn, the old sales barn, used to be um, to the east of there. Right. The yes. Road. The live so, the livestock. Yes. Um, Talbotville livestock. We used to take all our livestock there. Okay. Yeah, there used to be a regular trip there to sell things and buy livestock. Yeah. And just, just to clarify for the, for the uh, recording, um, my, so my personal attachment is my stepfather, Rob Ellis, was, is the current owner of what was Ellis Farm Equipment in Payne's Mills. Um, my mom was the parts manager. I worked there as well for a time. Um, so it's still family owned. Yeah. And, but we have at least for other businesses. And so that's our connection to, uh, to Payne's Mills. But and uh, yeah. Yeah, the Women's Institute Hall used to be there beside the school. Actually, the, the old hall was out in sort of on the front of the school. And then they built a new hall in about 1960, a little back further from there. Okay. And none of those buildings are there now. No, I don't think so. No, no I think they're all gone, which, yeah. is, which is a shame. Yeah. But we can probably find some photographs. 
I'm um, sure they are. Yeah, yes. to put with um, yeah. with the recording. Yeah. Um, so how long were you, or maybe, let's talk about the, the schoolhouse. It was one room. It was one room, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was still the old, uh, well, we had inside toilets, which was nice, but they were the, the ones like you have here, like the big tank, you know, the toilet sitting on top of a big tank, and they pumped it out every year, I guess. Okay. Then, and what year did you start school? Uh, 1958. Okay. Yeah. But they did modernize that school. They actually put in new washrooms with flush toilets in there. <laughs> so, so that was a uh, modernization. That was probably the, okay. the first flush toilets we got to use. Because in our house where we lived in, we had running water, but we didn't have uh, indoor toilets. So we still had the old outhouse. Okay. To, so. And yeah. that, that will lead to a question someone has, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, the toilet paper question. <laughs> There's always, people yeah. are always curious about toilet paper. Yeah. Um, were you were you the Eaton's and Sears catalog people? No, we were the store-bought. Uh, yes, store-bought toilet paper, okay. Yes. I just know that that's going to be a question for somebody. If you have an yes. outhouse, they assume. <laughs> um, so, yeah, how long were you at the schoolhouse in Payne's Mills? We, we stayed there till 19... Early 1962, okay. when my parents bought the original family farm here at Coins Corners. Okay, so, so let's <coughs> let's yeah. talk about um, the farm then, because there's quite a, a good history mm -hmm. um, with that farm. So maybe let's do the history of of that farm, and then we can get into when you yeah. all lived yeah. there. Yeah. So that that farm was the one that my great 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 grandfather moved to in 1820, just after he came from Scotland, and uh, he was able to get 100 acres. He got uh, claims of John Matheson uh, there at the um, northwest corner and the northeast corner, which was McClandris. Um, he got that for himself. So he had 100 acres there. So he was one of the few farmers that actually started off with 100 acres. And then he was able to lease another 50 acres from Colonel Tobin. So by 1825, he had 150 acres he was farming there, which was Good size operation yeah. for uh, for the time. So uh, so he um, the family st stayed there. Um, my great great grandfather Neil came over from Scotland when he was five years old. So he grew up on that farm, and then he moved uh, towards Iona, got a farm there. Then he moved up to Southwold, and his younger brother stayed on the farm. So and he was the one that stayed there, and his um, sister was married to Clark, and so they got the other farm there. So where the McClanders farm was there uh, was originally the Clarks, which was okay. Sarah McGugan who married to Clark. So it's sort of stayed in the family there for a while. It's all McGugan. <laughs> yeah, it's all McGugan. So, so yes, yeah, so my father had the opportunity to buy the farm from a daughter of the, the Donald McGugan, so, which was His uncle, or his great great uncle. So, so it, it gets confusing in the Guggen family. The, the name Donald appears. So they were, they had to have nicknames for the Donalds because there were so many of them, and they were also called Dan. So you have Don, Dan or Donald, and so my father had a great uncle, um, Donald, and, a, and a uncle Donald, I think, and they were both the same age because they were one of these where. One was the oldest in the family, one was the youngest in the sort of thing, and they, so they had two uncles of the same age, same name, but they were different generations. So, so it does get confusing when you start to do family history. You've got to be very careful of what names you use and what dates you use, because uh, it could be uh, completely different people. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was sort of always interesting to look into the family history. And you, yeah. you do have to draw it out sometimes. That's and maybe yeah, yeah, and maybe that's what we'll do because I know that you've given us the um, quite a bit of the Magugan um, history. So when we put together the video, um, what we may do is slide in yes. some of that. So there's there's pictures of the farmhouse from about 1900 that shows, um, you know, the, what is he the third, second? I guess the second Dan, yes, or Donald, mm -hmm. yeah, and his son Donald. Was, who ended up with the farm too. So there were three Donalds in a row, so that from about uh, 1820 to 1946, the farm was owned by Donald McGugan. 
<laughs> Easy. Just a different, just a different one. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Now, what kind of things did they, were they growing there and were the, did they have any other businesses that they were operating on um, uh, any of the yeah, corners, yeah. actually? Well, on, on, on our corner, um, I think they were just um, sort of general grain farming and they, um, they had obviously cattle and, and sheep. I don't know that they ever had many pigs because there's never been a, a barn for uh, pigs there. There's a sheep barn and the cattle barn and horse barn there, but we never really had much. We will consult the census. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll consult the census and see uh, yes. um, exactly maybe what they were growing. Um, yeah. But they, they would have had wheat and um, actually it's interesting when you look in the census, um, they didn't grow soybeans back in the 1800s, but they grew peas. So field peas was a, a major crop and that's where they, I guess it would provide fertilizer, like nitrogen for the fields and, and provide protein. Um, I'm assuming it was animal feed, but it could have been used as people feed. Too. You could have eaten so, it. Yeah. I mean, peas, yeah. porridge, yes. hot. <laughs> and, and they grew some beans too, so like, and they were like kidney beans. So if you go up into the old barn there, there's some old straw there and there's a few beans still left in that straw. I should, I should take them and see if they would grow. We, sh we should try and grow them here. Yeah, I don't know if there's any left there now, but uh, yeah. I can imagine. I remember going up there and finding some beans in the old straw there. So. Awesome. Yeah. So and there was, a, I think there was a, at one time there was a blacksmith shop there on the uh, corners there. So in, in, in our barns there, there's some old blacksmith tools around. And old, for drills and things, so yeah. So it was. I mean, there was two hotels. Our house was originally built as a hotel by great great uncle John. Mm -hmm. So, and we've got the paperwork when he when he built the uh, hotel. He had to borrow money from his father to build it. So he had to give his father a, a, a bond for that money. So we have that paperwork for that. So we so we know sort of when. That's how we know when the house was built because. Uh, you know when that done, the work was done, and when he uh, bought that corner and put up the hotel. We'll have to get a copy yeah. of that to yeah. <laughs> to put on there. That's fantastic because yeah. I mean, not a lot of families don't have all of their paperwork, so yeah, that's good that they had that. Um, and any, have you heard any stories or details about what it was like running as the hotel or the inn? Um, because Highway Three, which is now Talbot Line, was the main traveling road once you yeah. if you weren't using water like yeah. erie and the thames river yeah. you were using the talbot line yeah so i think it was it was it was busy for people going to Draconnell because it was one of the ports where things got shipped out so you would come from the west down the talbot line and then take the coin road down to uh Draconnell. and so that's why a lot of people sort of stopped there that's why it was a sort of major stopping point because it was a branch off to Draconnell. Mm -hmm. so yeah so there um, I would expect it was fairly busy. Like it was, a, there was a coin. It was interesting. The uh, the uh, Guggen Hotel was sort of on the north side of the road, and that was a Scottish hotel. And the Coin Hotel was on the south side of the road, and that was the uh, coins were from Ireland, I guess. So there was a, probably a bit of rivalry there between the Scots and the uh, Irish, I would think. I th I think so. That but, seems yeah. to be the common theme. Yeah. Here and then, British people decided which one they would <laughs> yeah. would stop at. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure whether it was also a liberal conservative in there too. So it was uh, probably politics and, uh, and a few other things. So. Yeah. Yes, I do yeah. believe Henry Coyne was not of the same political leaning as Colonel Talbot and his supporters. Yes. And that caused some issues. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I do remember reading that. Yeah, but it would have been a busy corner back in the 1850s and, and 60s, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Henry Coyne always. At a hotel there, I think, from the times that his son Isaac built a new hotel in the 1840s, I think, that was on what's now uh, Barber's corner there. Right, so that's the southeast corner. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so the, the building's no longer there. No. Um, which is, again, unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else was in, was in Coins Corners? Um, so we had, so there's two hotels. Yeah, there was actually um, a third hotel just up the uh, highway to the west. Um, Gun, Guns had a hotel up there, just the other side of the creek, you know, where the creek crosses the 
top of the line there. Okay. Just up on the um, was it the south southwest side of the creek there. In that field, there was another hotel there. So there was actually three hotels there at one point. So it was, it was quite a busy. Uh, that is busy. Spot there. Because you do have, I had forgotten about Turconnell being the pier, so going yeah. down, up and down Coin yeah. Road, right. Yes. not to mention the east-west yes. route, so I can see why yeah. that's busier, yeah. um, bef before Wallacetown becomes kind of the hub yes. as well, so Wallacetown's yeah. after that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you did mention the blacksmith. Um, mm -hmm. I believe in the Early History of Dunwich Book Volume 1, I believe the gentleman was black. Yes. I believe he was African American. Yes. And we yeah. don't have information on him other than... Um, I think his name was Richie, but uh, that's just out of the top of my head. Let's look it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to get this wrong. I thought it was Rossi. Could have been, yes. Let's, let's just pee. Yeah, I know it started with R, so... And I'll just look up the coins corners. Oh, we'll look up. We'll look up the R's. Caitlin will have to edit our <laughs> our questions out. I'll look up Richie. It is something. It yeah. John Richie, one twenty six. You might not even have put it in that book. It's it's it is in here. Yeah. I do recall. I remember thinking, oh, I wish we knew more mm -hmm. about this gentleman because I, I believe it referred to, you know, nobody knew um, where he had come from, but he had gone to, I think, Dresden after. Yeah, and I remember um, Ray Brad who lived where the, the coins lived. The Braden family bought that afterwards. They had, he had a forage in his uh, old building, the old, he had an old, he actually converted part of the old house into a, a workshop, oh. so he had a forge inside there. No, I, I can't find him at all now. Yeah. Darn! I do, it's, it's maybe yes. three or four sentences, and yes. it's quite... It's quite it interesting. Should, I think it should be in the area. Of the it should be in the coins, coins corner section. Yeah. Am I in? I'm in Wallace Town. I need. I need pre railroad. And the other, the other reason we know when the house was built is that the township council used to hold meetings in the. They didn't before they had a town hall. They would hold meetings in hotels. And so in, I think it was May of 1854, they met in John McGuggan's hotel. So we know it was built by then. They, they had previously had met in the, the Coin Hotel occasionally. So they obviously moved around. And, yeah. I was, that was my next question. Did you see that they frequented all of them equally yes. so as not to be seen? Well, I, I'm assuming the, the local people could actually come to the meetings and see what's going on. True. Be interesting. Maybe have a pint while they're... Yes. Yes, when we were doing renovations on the house, um, in the, what used to be the old living room, or it must have been the bar room, you could see on the floor where the bar had been, there was a, a, a watermark on the floor where they obviously had the bar in the one corner. So it, uh, it did get some use during those days. But when the railroad, I think, went through in the 1870s, all the traffic moved to Dutton. So, you know. And actually, I'm not sure how long John ran the hotel himself, because if you look in the later census, there's somebody else um, running the hotel. I think they leased it from him and, and ran it. That makes sense. So, yeah, potentially yeah. he wanted to yeah. retire, Yeah. but didn't want to give up all of the... Yeah. Yeah, give up the farm or the land. Yeah, he might not have enjoyed running a hotel, being, being a good Baptist that they, that they were. Now, were they, I don't know how to word this, which which Baptist were they? 
they were the old school or hard shell or whatever you want to call them Baptists. The, okay. Um, John Kenneth Galbraith. The, so the particular yeah. covenanted Baptist. Yes. Okay. Yes. That was my question, but I didn't yes. know how to word it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, what we're referring to is um, an old Scottish uh, sect mm -hmm. of Baptists. Um, and the group did come, as you said, 1819 yes. um, from Scotland here. And there currently still is the building um, east of Wallace, east of Wallace Town. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was the particular covenanted Baptist church, yes. but there were there were multiple buildings over the years, but that's just the one that's yes. still and there was up. there were actually seven churches. They called them the Seven Sisters, I think, in, in around the area. Okay. Seven Baptist churches. So they would, and uh, for the one in Wallace Town, they they um, had the May what they called the May meeting. So in May, I don't know if it was a long weekend in May, but they would have a two day. Um, church service there, and people, all the the people would come in to the church for that. Uh, so all seven would get together at one, one the one right. in Wall, outside Wallace Town. Yes. So I remember going to one of those in the early 1960s. Okay. What yeah. was what was that? What was it like? How many how many people yeah. um, would you say? There was quite a large crowd. I think and the church would have been full. Um, I'm not sure how many it held. I've never, I've never been yeah. inside, so. Yeah, I've only been in there once, I think. But, a couple hundred. Yeah. Uh, possibly that. Okay. Maybe a hundred. Yeah. Okay, a hundred for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was a long service, and they didn't, they didn't have an organ. But, uh, no, so it was. Uh, remember, the pews were fairly hard. <laughs> no cushions. <laughs> no cushions. <laughs> and then um, I, th I think mm -hmm. they had some beliefs about music. Which would be why there isn't an organ. Yeah. Um, because I don't think they actually sang as as a lot of people would sing a hymn. Did they not do repeating the I think lines they had the, back and yes, forth? Yes, they had the uh, uh, presenter. Was it? I think there I was think a name so. for the yeah who uh, would sing it and they respond. I think. So, yeah. Yeah. But monotone, right? Yeah. Not yeah. not a melody to yeah. the. Yeah. Okay. And and um, we had no. Playing cards on Sundays. No, no. Uh, the only farm work we did on Sundays was actually feeding the animals and milking. Other than that, you did not do any field work. You didn't do any other work. So, no, yeah. just just the necessities yeah. of feeding yeah. everyone. That but, makes sense. Yeah, it's interesting that um, where my family came from in Scotland, um, the next family over were McGugans, and they went to North Carolina, and they were also Baptists, and so it was the same. Baptist, so they would, I think, sometimes to get their ministers trained down in the North Carolina area because it was the uh, so it's the same roots as the Southern Baptist. Okay. Um, the particular. Yep. Covenanted. Interesting. Sure. Um, so in because there's no churches right near Coins Corners. Well, there used to be one right where the um, Talbot Line came up to Highway Three. Um, there's a little triangular piece of land there. There used to be the highway barns years ago, and now it's the there's a house in there. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was the highway barns, and then um, now it's Dealman's farm equipment there. I think. No, that, well, that's no, it's across the road before. Oh, across. <laughs> oh, across yeah. from it. Yes, there's a house. There's a house back in there. Um, and that's where a ch the church. That's where the church was. Where that, okay. where that little, um, where the road came up to meet the uh, top of the line, there. So if you know the road that runs through the, uh, um, Pierce Farm, the William Pierce Farm, or what? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fre <laughs> recently, yeah. Harrison's. Yeah, Harrison's. That one. Yes. yes. Okay. If, if you follow that road up to where it hits Highway Three. Um, yeah. That's where the church was, right in there. Oh. Yes. And it was Baptist. It was Baptist, yes. So it was the first one they built. Okay. Before they did. The so there's a so the little house there now, is that the corner or the empty corner that is field? Do you remember which side? Ooh, it could it probably well, was where the house is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there was a church. So yeah, that would be the closest yeah. to Coins Corners. Um, yeah. But you just you are just on the outskirts of Wallace Town there. So I expect between. Oh, Sort of the 18 or 40s and, and 1870, Coins Corners was quite a busy place. I think so, yes. Yeah, because if yeah. you sort of look, if you start to look at the census records up to 1840, it was 
it was very agricultural, um, very everything done by hand pretty well. And, and the period between 1840 and 1870 was gradual mechanization. So there's always machines coming in and more horsepower and things like thrashing machines and reapers and mm -hmm. all this coming along. So it was a, quite a change in the farming from then. So you, you actually needed blacksmiths for um, producing all this equipment and keeping it fixed. Yeah, yes, yeah. all the other all the other businesses mm -hmm. that come with more people yeah. um, you require. And, yeah. uh, and, and obviously just by the number, that like three hotels is quite a bit. Yeah. And I mean, if they're all operating at the same time, there's enough business. Yeah, I mean, they weren't happen. large yeah. hotels, but they were, I mean, to have that many. Would there. you hazard a guess as to, or, or perhaps you have mm -hmm. paperwork, how many rooms they were letting out? Or be uh, uh, beds, maybe? Maybe it wasn't a whole room. No, actually, well, it was interesting in our house, there was, um, upstairs they're set up as a kind of a living area with a stove and a bedroom off to the side in one part, and then there was sort of three other bedrooms. So there was sort of four bedrooms of the mirror upstairs, and downstairs there was a um, sort of the, um, obviously the bar room and dining room on the one side, and then on the other side there's another living area and a couple of rooms off that. So there was probably um, about six bedrooms. In, okay. And the one was was a pretty like 12 feet by 20 feet, so it was probably a, um, could have been more than one bed. There was probably like a dormitory type of a room. Yes, that's why, that's why I worded my question like, oh, perhaps they were just you know, renting out a bed, yes. not a whole room yeah. to some people. Some people, that's maybe all they yeah. could afford. Yeah. Um, so if you had money, you would probably rent out a suite. If you, otherwise, you would maybe get half a bed. Um, what was it like when you moved to Coins Corners in? Mm. When did you say nineteen sixty-two? Two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, how many people are in your immediate family? So there's my there's my parents and my I have a sister. So there was just a. Uh, Four of us living there. Okay. Yeah, other, um, previously, there had been like eight or nine children, probably in the family, and yeah, so families got smaller as yes. time goes on. You don't need as much labor. True. Yeah. Uh, yes, that that is common. Why they had not the only reason why they had quite a few yeah. children, but you did need your own labor force yes. on your farm. Yeah. So um, maybe give the names of your parents and your sister. Yeah. So we've got everybody. So my um, my father was. Stuart, his, actually, his name was actually James Alexander McGugan, and then when, when my aunt registered his name, she stuck into Stuart. So, and he became known as Stuart for the rest of his life. So, it was supposed to have been James Alexander, but ended up as Stuart. My mother was uh, um, Ruby Metherill. Um, it's interesting how she got to meet my father. Tell us. Um, her aunt and uncle uh, came over from England to. Canada settled in South Pole. They came over in 1912, I think it was. They tried to book on the Titanic, but it was filled up. So they had to take another ship. <laughs> so, so that was... Whoa! Uh, yeah. That's one of yeah. those stories where you're like, if they had yeah. got on, I wouldn't be here. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So they came over and settled in uh, South Pole, and their um, son, married my aunt, my father's sister. So, so the Hutchings, there was, uh, yeah. So the Hutchings family living in uh, Southwold. That was my mother's uh, aunt was there. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, after the war, 1947, I think it was, my mother came over to visit her aunt and uncle in uh, Southwold. And, and her uncle took her around to vi visit all the eligible bachelors in the uh, area and, and she got my father's eye and so they ended up getting married so that's great so she so her yeah. so it's her aunt and uncle who came over here yes. first yeah. so she was with her parents in england, in england this whole time so yeah. through the war years yes. that that side of the family stayed yes um did she come with any stories of what it was like in england, being in england well, uh, yeah. yeah i mean she worked uh, her brother's I think we were in the service. One brother went to, to uh, ended up in Egypt. He he was a carpenter, and he ended up fixing Spitfires. That was because he was because they were partially partially yeah. um, 
with, so he was his job was fixing Spitfires. Uh, she worked in a um, factory that made propeller plates for airplanes. So, uh, yeah, it was, and she came. She actually came over after the war, and thought, thinking she'd make some money in Canada and go back, back home to live. But uh, yeah, she ended up staying. That didn't didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. So, she stayed. Yeah, but uh, so that meant that um, during my life, my grandparents on one side were in England, and my aunt and uncle's wife been over to England quite a few times. Our first trip was 1956. We went over mm -hmm. on a ship from uh, sailed from uh, Quebec. About a week? Is that about that how long about a week it takes? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, and could you spell her maiden name? Because I didn't catch. M e t h e r e l l. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so she comes from Eng so she's yeah. English. Your dad's family's been here. Yeah. <laughs> Since 1819. Yeah. Um, and then so you've moved to the McGugan farm. Yes. And. I know in a previous conversation off camera, you had mentioned that there was still the one room schoolhouse. Yes. And you were the last class that graduated, graduated yes. from there. Yes. So what was it like? Because you had the Payne's Mills experience yes. Yes. too. What was the, di was there a difference? This was a smaller school. In Payne's Mills we had, it was a big school. We had about 30 to 32 students. Now was it brick? It, it, they bricked it. Yes, okay. it, it was actually one of these schools that started off on the garbage. Mm -hmm. Farm across from where Joe Casey is, up there. Okay, which yeah. is for the people on the video. <laughs> Joe Casey lives mm -hmm. on Talbot Line. Right. Yes. Okay, so across from his yeah. farm was the Garbett School. Yes. Okay, so yes. then they moved it. They moved it um, as as they got more students, as they opened up more of the uh, township, you know, back in that area, and they moved it there, and then then they bricks on it, apparently so it wouldn't get moved again. So it was originally a frame school with a, a um, brick veneer on the outside. Okay. But yes, we had the, we had the in, indoor toilets again, the tank, <laughs> and, 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 and drinking water for the school, for the, for the boys, was a pail sitting in the uh, clover room with a dipper in it. So if you wanted to drink of water, you just took the dipper. So, so if any, anybody got sick, it was a good way for Spreading germs around. Everyone got sick. Yeah. 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 And pr previous to our pandemic, most of us had had a drink out of something like that yes. at some of our parents' farms. I mean, yeah. I I had, <laughs> but now we yeah. think that's gross. Yeah, the well was sitting out on the, along the road. There's, the well is still there. Okay. So we used to, yeah, you used to have to go out and pump your pail of water and uh, bring it in. Yeah. And, uh, there, there was a so that's where the boys yeah. had their drinking. Did the girls have the same thing? I think the same thing. thing um, just yeah, there was a what they call cloakrooms yep. in those days, yes, there was so the boys on the one side, on the north side, and the girls on the south side. Okay, and did you have two different doors? No, it was the one, just the one door. It was, okay. a, very, it was a very small school. Right. How many How many kids were there, would you say, when you went? 20, 20, 21, somewhere in that. That is all. Yeah, so sometimes there would be a grade without any students in it. But it's interesting, uh, in Payne's Mills, the, the desks were bolted down to the floor, in the coin school, they were put on wooden strips, so in like two or three desks together, and you could move the desks around. And so every year we had the Christmas concert. Do you remember those days of Christmas yes. concert? That was a big event for the school. So they, in December, they would set up a stage at the uh, front of the school, and we'd spend December practicing our parts for this uh, Christmas concert. And then at, uh, we'd have the, all the families would come in and we'd have this Christmas concert. Yeah. So what what would mm -hmm. be part of the Christmas concert? What kinds of things well, did you all have to skits. do? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, would, I remember I was doing one sort of uh, skit and I was supposed to be like a radio announcer and I had a fake mustache. It was hurt. And, and halfway through the thing, the mustache dropped off and <laughs> we were having to catch this <laughs> mustache. I carry on with the uh, yeah. thing. So it was... It was uh, yeah, I think things like, yeah, little little skits. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So w I'm and, sure and there was singing. Carols, yes. Yeah. 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 Any refreshments? I know that's always a uh, fun. There probably was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, what teachers do you remember having at that particular school? That was uh, Mrs. McFarland, Thelma McFarland. Okay. Yeah. So I had in public school. I had two teachers. I had Annie Isabel 
McCollum, and because we moved, I had uh, Thelma McFarlane, who was was our neighbor. She was a brat, and so, of course, in those days, everybody knew the teacher, and the teacher knew all the parents. So you, oh. you didn't get a, you couldn't get away with anything because um, the teacher would could talk to the, the parents uh, quite easily. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and she didn't need a phone call. She could just walk to your house. Yeah. Well, she drove by it every day on the way to school. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it so it was. Uh, and I mean, there it was interesting. You'd, you'd have maybe four or five kids in a family. So, in the whole school of twenty kids, there would be a half a dozen families. Yeah. You know, there was Lions, who had you know, four or five kids, and there was Clanderses, and there was uh, Fords. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and. Uh, like McKeatings and that and, and us and there that was most of the families and other O'Gowans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so you could almost there was half about a half dozen families and you so you knew sort of all the kids. Yeah, so that's only yeah. six sets of parents that you yeah. you know, the teacher yeah. was dealing guess, with at the time. Yeah, Campbell's was another family, yeah. Yeah. So which how many grades was she or I guess both schools <coughs> were teaching the same grades? Yeah. Yes, eight so. grades. Eight grades. Okay. Yeah. There was no there was no kindergarten in those no. days. So you started grade one, and the, but they taught um, two grades together. So you would, uh, I, well, maybe maybe grades one and two were separate. But after that, um, three and four, five, six, seven, and eight were taught together, and they switched around every year. So you, the one year you would do grade three and grade, and then next year you. Or do grade four sort of thing. So, so potentially for yeah. some kids they were doing, they were doing grade four and then grade three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So that's how this teacher managed to do all eight grades. Yeah. Now what did the inside of the classroom look like? Um, and I'm I'm asking this for most people when we, yeah. we do their interviews because we yeah. potentially are getting a one room schoolhouse yeah. here at the museum. Yeah. It wasn't much bigger than this. <laughs> Which is twenty yeah. by, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe so tw twenty by yeah. four, fifteen. So yeah. yeah. So there, yeah, it was sort of, yeah, about this, it'd be about this size. Yeah, it was a teacher's desk at the uh, sort of the front. front of the room. Yeah, and then there was I think three tall windows on each side so mm -hmm. to let light in, and then at the back there was the uh, the cloakroom on each side, and then the entrance. Okay, yeah. and then yeah. Yeah. blackboards just behind the teacher, or did um, you have some other? I think they were all around between the windows and along the teacher. So I think every part of the wall um, had blackboards. Okay. Yeah. I guess yeah. that would be easier for the teacher because then they could have different grades. Yes. Looking at different yeah. different boards. Um, yeah. Any particular? There's a picture of the coin school in the book there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Inside. Let's put it. Let's put it up. It'll be in the school section, though. Yeah. Since we mention it, I will find it and say which page it's on. Are you SS? Ooh, you number three. Okay, because I think they're in order of number. Oh, SS three Dunwich coins. Yeah. Oh, oh I That's know. That's the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next page, is, there's an inside view. So page 247 is the outside view, and oh, this is perfect. Page 248 is the inside. Okay, and then it's got a, a yeah. large... Was it still being heated with wood, or is no, it... No, they, they modernized, they put in a... Well, a furnace, I guess. Oil? Yeah. Yeah. Because this, this yeah. certainly doesn't look like a wood. Yeah. And then I see in the back... Um, I'm going to generously call it the library. <laughs> There's yes. a bookcase with book, book. with some books on yes, it. It was a bookcase about the size of of ours. Yes. So like yes. four, yes. yeah. It's, it looks yeah. like it's four shelves, yeah. the height of a uh, an adult. Yeah. Um, were you able to borrow things from there, or was in was it in school only um, for those? I think it was mostly in school, but it was like the way it worked is a teacher would teach the different grades, like she'd move through, and so she'd assign you some work to do. And when you finished your work, you went back to the library and picked out a book and started reading it. So, so, so what couple do you do you remember picking out any mm -hmm. that were your favorites? I remember um, there was the um, Boy of the Limmer Lost, I think, was a book um, about 
Yeah, that was one of the ones I remember. I okay. don't, uh, don't remember too many of them, but it was just sort of filler. Like I think there was many. Yeah. Probably Tom Tom Sawyer, I think. And, yeah. You're the second interview person who has said, I remember reading Tom Sawyer. And that's yeah. two different yeah. schoolhouses in yeah. Dunwich, so yeah. Tom Sawyer was popular yeah. in uh, in a few different eras. And I see at the back there's bulletin boards. It yeah. looks, that's what it yeah. looks like in the picture. Yeah. There was actually uh, a little cover with um, some china in it, cups and things, like they, they, uh, they used to serve, I think, soup things at lunchtime in the schools. Not when we were there, but at some point they did um, some meals, I think. Okay. Interesting. I'd love to hear, I'd love to, that might be yeah. something we need to look up. Yeah. When, because my mind is thinking depression, but that's 30 years of storing. Yeah, so it was, well, yeah. they, you know, nobody ever threw anything out. That's true. <laughs> so, so even if they were from the depression, yeah, people were still. Yeah, they were, that was, it was only 19... 60s, it wasn't that long after. Well, it's the, yeah, still yeah. 30 years. Okay, so it's legit, it's yeah. logical they could have still kept those. Because yeah. that would be the only time that I'm thinking they might have thought ooh, perhaps some of the children might need to be fed yes. during school. Yeah. Uh, well, potentially during World War II. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, that's something we'll have to yes. ask around, yeah. see if it happened in other schools as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, what, what subjects, because I, I have read a little bit where potentially in rural areas like ours, maybe there was more nature and agriculture taught than perhaps going to a school in the city. But uh, I'm wondering yeah. if, if you just had well, general Yeah, I mean, curriculum. just in general, I remember we, we had a chart on the wall of the different birds. Mm -hmm. And so in the spring, you'd, you'd want to be the first person to see a robin or a, what, you know, all the different, so there was all the different birds to identify. Uh, we used to, have Arbor Day. I don't know if you remember Arbor Day. Was it an actual holiday here? It was actually, well, I don't know if it was a holiday. It was a day of school when we go and clean up the schoolyard. It was, I think it was probably about the end of April, early okay. May, where we'd um, go out and clean up the uh, school and have a little bonfire and have a uh, hot dog, cook some hot dogs on okay. the, the twigs. I wonder if, by, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm 45, so I'm yes. wondering if by the time I go to school, it's Earth Day. Good, good, but I'm wondering, good, so yeah. we can we can look up whether Arbor Day became Earth Day or yes. if, because I, you don't hear about Arbor. I read stuff where yes. I'm like, oh, they have this Arbor Day. Yes, and um, that would have been about the end of April. Yeah, it was interesting. Kind of cleaning up schoolyard and uh, and we used to because our farm was right next door. We had a wood lot, so we would take um, field trips into the woods to see the spring flowers. So okay. The, the, the teacher it was interesting. My father. Would watch and be like this hen with her flock of chickens. <laughs> Say we'd walk out to the uh, the woodlot and, and see all the trees and flowers. Yeah. Okay. And Did you guys have trilliums in your oh, yes. woodlot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And one year we had a beaver dam on our creek, so we we had to make a trip to see this beaver dam. Fascinating, because we don't really have that here. In the last ten years, there's maybe been one mention that perhaps. There might be some beavers in the area, but yeah. nobody's seen them, and yeah, yeah but it's not um, yeah. so not it a big thing anymore. It would have been about 1965, 16 or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. How big of a mess did like did they? Because I mean, they're building the dam to stop up the water. Yeah, they didn't they didn't stay there too long. I don't know if somebody trapped them or what happened to them, but yeah, it was just you could see the uh, the sticks that they chewed and and built where they built the dam. Interesting. That's fun. Um, did you get to go field trips any farther than just where you could walk? Um, actually, don't, well, yes, we went to um, Jack Miner's Bird Sanctuary at Kingsville. Okay. To, to see that. So did they have, um, how do you arrange transportation? Just parents, some parents drove carpooling? Probably, yes. Okay. You know, with 20 kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you didn't go yeah. in one vehicle. <laughs> well, but, it was a class. We did a. We, the uh, teacher took the grade eights on a uh, class trip, so she took. The, the you could potentially have gone in one car then, the, if it's four, just there was four of us. Okay. Yes, there was myself, Jim Ford, Peter Schaefer, and uh, Phil Campbell, and we. She took us to Niagara Falls. It was our wow. Graduation trip. Yes. 
That's fantastic. Yes. So, um, just for the day? Is that, yes, just for the day. Yeah, because yeah. you can go back and forth. Um, yes. Tell me a bit about that. <laughs> she, she did. Good for her. <laughs> I'm just thinking, <laughs> taking, <laughs> taking, you know, four 12, <laughs> 12 year old boys anywhere. <laughs> But you'd be well, well behaved, right? Because you're of course. going, yes. yeah, we get to go somewhere. Yes. yes. Yeah. So yeah. just to the falls, what else did you do while you were there? I, I remember, well, just a, a tour around the area. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Any of the history, probably the 1812? We, I think, we, yeah, we went to Queenston. Yeah, we went to the Brock Monument. Yeah. Queenston, I, yes. Because if it's supposed to be school, they, yes. she's got to do all her. Yes. Her spot. Was that your first trip to Niagara Falls? Uh, or, or even for the other boys that went? I think it might have been, yes. Yeah. Yes. So. Cool. Yeah. That was... But I mean, those are the days when the teachers still had a strap, so... True. Yes. And she might have brought it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure she was never good. saw her use it, so... Oh, that's good. Yeah. She kept good control of her class. Um, now, what did you do after grade eight? I went to the high school in West Elgin, West Elgin District High School. Oh, right, before it was West Elgin Secondary, Secondary School. school. Yes. Um, right, now you're the last class to graduate from your one-room schoolhouse, yes. and then they closed it. They closed it, sold it off, yes. Okay. And, they, and everybody then went to the Central School in uh, Dutton. Right, Dutton Dunwich Public School, yes. which had previously been the Dutton yes. High School uh, way was, back when. It was interesting, every year the school inspector used to come around, so we had to be in our best, Mr. Rawlings, the, uh, we had to be in our best behavior when, when he came along. Other than that, the, the teacher sort of ran the school. There was, right. no, the, there was no administration, she, she, she was it. Yeah. yeah, and he was more checking on her, her really, and the building. Yes. You know, the yeah. inspectors were just, yeah. 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 Are, you, are they well behaved? <laughs> How is she teaching? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so then you went to high school, yes, and which is, and it's still yeah. Yeah, almost so, the same school. <laughs> yeah, so we had, we had uh, the bus. We used to get the bus going you know, to high school there. So yes, it was. Those were the days when it was uh, two streams, the four four year uh, and uh, five year streams. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did you have to decide? You could switch during grade nine, ten, right? Like you could move. I think you decided when you went into grade nine, which... When, when you, you started. Went, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because one yeah. was technical one was five and year one was academic. One was five-year arts and science. Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, so what year did you graduate West Elgin then? Uh, 1971. Right. And then you went to university? Yeah, Waterloo, yes. Okay. And what did yeah. you take at... I did mechanical engineering there. Yeah. So, well, I know these things, but they yes. don't... <laughs> <laughs> so mechanical so, engineering, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, four years at. Actually, it, it takes. It was co-op, so it took. Okay. Uh, it was a four-year program, but it took five years to, to do it. Right, because you worked for a year. Yeah, as there was part of actually it. Uh, eight work terms. Oh. And did those change? Yes. Each time. Yeah, yeah, you had to, uh, to, um, to apply for jobs and actually get hired. So, yeah, so I did my first two at. St. George at the Malcolm Condensing Company. It was, in, it was a milk factory. Okay. Yeah. So I, I grew up on a dairy farm producing um, milk and we took it to the, uh, put it in the cans and took it to Wallace Town where Roy Lidster picked it up. I don't know if you remember Lidster, you know the Lidster. Well, I know the family. Lidster family. Yes. 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 Yeah, Roy Lidster was the trucker who drove the milk down to Carnation. The Carnation Chapter in Hilmer. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. So it was sort of like a, a he, central place for the area. Yeah, he would pick up. In Wallace. Yeah, yeah. So he would pick up the milk. Yeah. Oh, and, and then drove it to Elmer to their yeah. their factory. So when I worked in this factory in uh, St. George, uh, one of the jobs I did was the milk was delivered to the factory, it came in in the cans. So we'd take the lid off a can and check it to see if it wasn't sour <clears throat> and dump it into a weigh tank and somebody would record the weight. And it would go into the factory. So, so you just so, got the other end of the... And then, and then they ran the uh, separator room where we separated the cream from the uh, milk and then worked in the uh, drying area where they dried the uh, milk, turned it into milk powder. So, 
Oh, right, yeah. So I've, I've seen the dairy industry from one end to the other. Interesting. Yeah. That's kind of fun. Yeah, so I did two work terms there. Two, yeah. I did uh, two work terms with um, Ontario Hydro, one at the um, Pickering Nuclear Power Plant, another one in uh, Galt where they were building the boilers for the Bruce Nuclear Plant. So you, you see on the news where they're replacing the boilers. I, I was working originally an inspector on the original boilers that they put. They're not using the <laughs> same boilers, right? They're using the same design. Okay, but not the actual not the, boilers. No. <laughs> I thought that's what you were going to say and <laughs> I was I, like, what? I, when I looked at them okay. and started putting the new ones in, I thought, oh, Similar they look design. familiar, yeah. So you, your job was part of the inspection designs yes. part yes. of that. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's fun. And then, um, how long have you, because you, you, wait, are you still teaching? No, you, no, retired, you're retired. retired. I thought so. Yes. Um, and then, so yeah. tell us about the switch to teaching. So, yeah, so after I graduated from university, I, well, one of the, uh, I worked at a consulting firm and I did some work on a uh, Union Carbide plant in Sarnia where we mm -hmm. were doing some environmental work on that and I ended up getting a job at that plant in Sarnia. So it's, it's now the Nova chemical plant. But there, in the 1970s, there was a big expansion going in Sarnia. They built the big Petrozar plant and, and the Union Carbide built a polyethylene plant there. So I worked there during the startup, construction and startup of that plant, which was, which was a good learning experience because they were training engineers. And they, so I got sent down to Houston, Texas, and uh, West Virginia, and Charleston, West Virginia. And, and uh, a few other places to learn learn things. And uh, so we got this plan started up. Then I got a job with Ontario Research Foundation in Sheridan Park in, in uh, Mississauga. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for 10 years and then I got a job with Ontario Hydro Research in Toronto. And I worked there for another 13 years. So I, uh, and then uh, Conestoga College started offering four-year degrees. So this was in the 2003 when they started doing uh, bachelor's degrees. And so I had a friend that was teaching there and he s said there's a job opening here, you'd be a good fit for it. So I applied and we got a job there. So 2003, we, when the degree started, I started teaching in a uh, project and facility management a degree program there at Conestoga. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was interesting, our, I was an engineer from Waterloo and our, our project and facility management students were going out to work you know, as students and they were running into engineers and they were, and the engineers were saying, you're learning stuff that we didn't learn in school because they were looking after buildings and the, learning about heating and yeah. ventilation and all these things and these engineers were saying, you know, how come we didn't learn this stuff in school? So we said, well, why don't we start an engineering degree about building systems. So in about 2018, we started a new engineering degree for building systems engineering. So that is, was something I put together. Okay. And it got approved by the government. And so now the first class will be graduating this year. Fantastic. Out. Okay. So that was one of my um, accomplishments, I guess, was to get a new engineering degree. And it, it makes sense because that's, that's a major issue no. is finding somebody well, and, and who look, just yeah. yeah puts together buildings well and knows about ventilation in these yeah. days with COVID coming along you know you want engineers that know how buildings work and how ventilation works yeah. so yeah cool um so when did you get interested in more of the history genealogy mm -hmm. Because um, I know on the other side you've helped yeah. write the, the early history of Dunwich book, yeah. and yeah. Well, I was, uh, I guess I was, I had two, um, I guess, a couple of great aunts who were very much interested in the family history. So they, they had all these sort of put together these sheets of, of the family. Every in those days, everybody had family reunions. Yes. So we used to go. We used to have actually about three family reunions. So the um, the one we went to was that first one we went to was Port Glasgow, mm -hmm. where the everybody landed when they came from Scotland. 
Right. Yeah. So that was the annual McGugan Campbell reunion. And that was um, so we sort of get together with a lot of the relatives, and that was actually that goes back to the McGugan Campbell um, was two sisters, Flora McAlpin and Mary McAlpin. Flora McAlpin married Donald Campbell, and mm -hmm. Mary McAlpin married Donald McGugan, and so we had family reunions of, the, of that connection. So, okay. Yeah. So, so some McAlpins, <laughs> yeah, it was Campbell, McGoog, okay, yes. because they got married. Yeah, because those two sisters. Yeah. Love it. I'm glad yeah. that they they did it that way because yeah. a lot of times it's just the male yeah. line yes. that has the family reunion. Yeah. So, I'm, yeah, so, it's yeah, interesting so that was, sisters. So there's still people around that have been to that. Yeah, uh, yeah. and so um, we were living at Payne's Mills in the early days and we'd drive up Highway 3, top of the line, and we go by the old family farm. Mm -hmm. And so every time we went by there, my my parents would point out well, that's the old family farm. And so we ended up uh, moving there. But when we, it's interesting, when we moved to the family farm, like they've been there since 1820, so it was sort of like our own archives. You you go up to a, you know, there's this wooden box, and there you pull out the deed from Colonel Talbot, dated 1824, and then beside it there's the lease for the farm from 1825, at 50 acres, there's a letter from Scotland, written about 1842, from one of the sisters, who was saying her her daughter was coming over to Canada, and so could they look after them? And there was a, another letter from a um, fellow in Alboro who they sold a farm to, and it, it was interesting, North Alboro. Um, the, the surveys were were sort of a bit iffy, like yeah. they, they had to research a few times, and so so he had sold this lot to a um, fellow, and, it, and when the fellow looked into it, he found out that the improvements were on a, somebody else's lot. So he was wanted to get his money back, I guess. So there, we have that letter. There was a letter, another letter from a McIntyre who had moved to Detroit. Like was, one of the things about um, this area was when people wanted to, to go somewhere, Detroit was... Uh, uh, place where you could find a job. So, so a lot of a lot of people from this area moved into the states. So there's a lot of connections to the states. But he he had written back saying, "Okay, I've, I've, I left your place one day. I made it to Chatham, um, and then I, from Chatham they ran ferry ferries to uh, Detroit. So you get on oh on the Thames River. Um, yeah, you get on a ferry boat. <laughs> yeah, go from Chatham down to uh, Detroit, and so we ended up." in Detroit working as a carpenter there. So he said, if you're coming to Detroit, I'm sort of the, from the ferry dock, I'm the third shop on the left, sort of thing. So, yeah, so there was all this history around. Cool. So, yeah. That's great that everybody who had been at your farm just <coughs> compiled it and, yes. and just kept it, which yes. a lot yeah. of people don't do anymore. You don't end up necessarily with five generations of yes. things in a house, which... Yeah. Well, I'm from a family yeah. that tends not to throw things right. out. You know, if you need any horseshoe nails, <laughs> I, so. I was out in the barn one day doing something. I look up, and and the old barn has poles that hold the hay up. Like it was built probably for the 1840s. And I look at one of these poles, and it's actually a sort of almost like a two by four with holes drilled in it and wooden. It had wooden uh, pegs in it. It was the original harrows that they used, oh. probably from the 1820s. Yeah. But they, they weren't going to throw it out. They used it up in the barn. Yeah. So there's all kinds of old stuff around. Yeah. Far farms tended to be never throw things out yes. kind of people. Okay. So we'll go back to um, farm life, either, oh. either yeah. one. Um, yeah with, uh, you know, chores that you you were responsible for. Yeah, but, if, you know, in those back in the 50s, it was still mostly mixed farming. So yeah. everybody had, most people had a small herd of cattle and chickens and maybe pigs. And so um, one of the earliest jobs I remember was going out and getting the eggs, collecting the eggs. So, and the, I always used to hate when the hens were sitting on the nest where you'd reach in to get the eggs and they sometimes peck your hand. So. Okay, I thought you were going to say something else. I was like, are they pooping on you? No, no. That, uh, <laughs> they, they get you. 
reach in underneath. Yeah, so, yeah, which, re, which reminds me of uh, what a chicken dinner was. And when, when you have to, in those days, the chicken dinner started with going out and catching the chicken. Because the, these days, I think going to the supermarket and buying a chicken is one thing. Going out, um, because you do it usually after dark when they were roosting, so you'd go in and, and pick a chicken and hopefully get one that wasn't laying. And uh, yeah, so um, off with his head uh, with the axe, and then uh, yeah, it would run around like a chicken with his head cut off. Yes. Yeah. So, it was yeah. that. Did you ever have to do? Was that your job at some point? I was. I was the one that held the chicken. Oh, you held the chicken. Yes. Okay. And your dad was the chopper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then your mom and sister had to do the plucking. No, we we did the the kids did the plucking. Yeah. Oh, so okay. you would dump the uh, body into scalding hot water, and then we'd pull the feathers off. And my mother was the one that um, dressed it, finished it off. Right. Now you. I assume, because everyone keeps things, kept the feathers for any use? Were they pillow? I think we made pillows, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. Other than that, I don't know that we kept them for anything else. No. But there's always yeah. There's always yes. multiple uses for things. So, yeah, my assumption would be she probably um, mm -hmm. put them in pillows. Yeah. Um, besides chickens, I know some families had geese or ducks. Did you have any of the other? No, we never those? did. We no. just, just had... Chickens? No chickens. turkeys? No turkeys, no okay. cattle. We have dairy cattle. So, yeah. yeah. Any beef cattle? Um, some, yeah. yeah. yeah for Just for our own use, usually. Right. And then, yeah. um, you, you mentioned... Rabbits around, yeah, for pets. Rabbits were pets, yes. or...? No, just pets. Pets, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> you, you can know. have rabbits. And, of course, cats. We, we, we always had the, you know, ten, ten or so cats. Yes, the barn go. cats. What about yeah. dogs? Yeah, always have a dog. Yeah. Usually, yeah. A, usually a German Shepherd. Okay. Yeah. Any um, spe specific names that you recall for the different... Oh, there was Trixie was one of our German Shepherds. Wait, my, actually my grandmother had a um, dog that when we were kids we used to dress up. It was it was, it was the old man dog, that was its name. So <laughs> yeah, we, It was one of these that we could, an old collie that we could dress up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we, I know we talked about your first jobs when you got to university, but um, before yeah. that, were there any On the jobs farm, you did? well, bailing, bailing hay, my father bought a uh, baler when they first came out in 1960 from Harold Ellis. Ellis from Farm Equipment, Ellis Tall Farm Equipment. Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that baler, it's still working. Is it a in New, the Holland, 60s? New Holland? Yeah. Just New Holland, or were they Sperry New Holland at the no, time? No, no, it's New just Holland. New Holland. Okay, because yes. there was all the amalgamation, so I do yes, no, I do before, recall different before the amalgamation. Yes. Excellent. Yes. So we'll have to see that. Yeah. If it, we'll we'll see if we can get a picture. Um, <laughs> yeah. Does it still have the sticker? Because they used to have it's, it's like the dealership bit, stickers on them. Uh, no, it doesn't have a dealership sticker oh. on it. No. Bummer. I think that was probably before the days of maybe yeah. dealership decals and, yes. and fun stuff. Um, but my my father had his story about that, which which about Harold Ellis, where um, he bought a this baler from Harold Ellis, and Harold Ellis then sold another one to somebody else at a lower price, and he came to my father and gave him the difference in money back to my father. That's how. That's, that's was, Harold. That was honesty in those days, wasn't that, it? That that you know what that is. The that is the description of Harold Ellis that I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I mean, he didn't pass away till. God, so I, I knew him for years. I think my yeah. mom started working there when I was eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was twenty. I think I was twenty-eight when he passed away. Yeah, so I knew him for yeah. twenty years, and then being you know like a step grandparent. So yes. that that is the biggest. Yeah, that makes yeah. total sense that that would yeah, be something so that he would do. Stories my father told about him. He was yeah. so impressed by that. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. people he knew people yeah. talked yeah. and and he yeah. would feel awful. Yeah. And it was probably not yeah. that he. It probably was something where like the price went down, to, yes. you know, like New Holland yeah. offered some deal, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, yeah. I just sold this to somebody else two yeah. weeks ago." Yeah, that's funny. But yeah, on the farm, I remember 
Um, when I was very young, my, one of my first memories was uh, horses. My father huh? still had a team of horses. And so remember the hay loader that you had here? I remember one, seeing one of those in operation in a field putting hay onto the uh, wagon to go into the barn before we had the baler. Right, so it's the yeah. one um, It's the one that pulls behind the, pulls behind wagon, the wagon and dumps yeah. the yeah. hay onto the it. Yeah. 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 So, so that was one of my earliest memories. Yeah. The other, I remember Hurricane Hazel. I was about two years old. Oh, tell us about this because I don't. Yeah, well, it was a big event, Hurricane Hazel coming through. And we lived in a frame house at Payne's Mills. And we moved, we went to the neighbors who had a brick house. And I remember my mother carrying me through the wind and the rain out to the car to go to this neighbor's house. So that's one of my first memories. Wow. And that was Hurricane Hazel. And do you, <clears throat> stories since, do you know if they had much, because weather was, isn't what yeah. it is now, much warning that they were getting any uh, bad weather coming? It must have been sort of the day before or something, yeah. Ooh. yeah. But yeah, that's, wow. that was one of my sort of early memories here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'd be a little <laughs> scary, yeah. so, yes. yeah. Um, no, I know your sister plays a bunch of musical instruments. Is that something you both did? I learned the piano when I grew up. Yeah, took music at Alma College. In oh, okay. Yes, we used to go in there every Saturday for music lessons. And I stopped when I went to high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? Any extracurricular activities? Maybe more high school because. Not so much. Like it was because we yeah. had to there if I was getting home doing the chores. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't overly good at sports, so, yeah, so we just, um, I think I think that's what happened to a lot of um, kids who were on farms, is they, yeah. they just, you didn't stay after school, like you yeah, went home to do. Yeah, you had no way to get home, you had to go yeah. home on the bus. Yeah. yeah, so I know, I know that's the same thing that I've been told from my mom, yeah. is there weren't uh, extracurriculars. Was there, um, was there Boy Scouts or any, any of that kind of thing? Out here, 4-H? There was 4-H, but we didn't really get involved in that. Okay, junior yeah. farmers? Yeah, I didn't no? get okay. into that, no. Yeah, um, what about your mom? Was she part of, like, Women's Institute? Women's Institute, she was part of, and the United Church Women. Okay, right. Yeah, so she was Wallace Town yeah. Women's Institute? Yes, okay. yeah. 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 Well, we were doing Payne's Mills. Oh, of course. And then when we moved, yeah, Wallace Town. Yeah. Any any store you probably didn't get to go to anything. Yeah. No, <laughs> I have stories. I got to go to stuff. Yeah. Women's Institute. Yeah. Um, was, yeah. So then the church. Yeah, I was a speaker, of one meeting on the history. Yeah, we've got to. Uh, we get they get us to do that yeah. quite often. Um, there was something along the lines of the institute that I was going to ask, and I don't remember. Anything your dad belonged to? Was he part of any, like, political mm -hmm. parties? Not, or? not really, no. No, just sort of kept a low farming. profile. Farming, yeah. yeah. He worked He worked as a mechanic at Carmen Lyons. He had the farm machinery uh, dealership there. So, yeah. Where was Where was that one? Oh, you know where Yvonne Briggs is? Oh, yes, on the corner. Yeah, that was... That of was Coins a, Corner. Oh. Yeah, that was a farm machinery uh, uh, dealership. The Lions. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Carmen Lions originally, then Don Lions to go over. Yeah, so that barn where she does her upholstery in was the uh, barn where the... Like the shop. The shop part. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that at all. Oh. Ah. Okay. I guess so it was Lions, <laughs> Lions yes. Farm yes. Equipment. To, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Lions bought it from the Siftons. Right. Yeah. And which brand, or did they just fix anything? They were new. They were a new idea. David Brown. Okay. Dealer. Yeah. So they had new idea, um, corn prickers and mature manure spreaders and and David Brown tractors. Right. Yes. Now, did they have something to do with Bill Patterson then? Because he was a David <coughs> Brown salesman. Yes. So they would. He he was the sales rep, and they would sort of order, I guess, through him. Okay. But they were they were the service and parts. They were the service yeah. people. That's yeah. fantastic. Okay. See, Coins yeah. Corners was still so happening. I, yeah. So I worked. <laughs> I did some work. They were helping my father out on that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. The the Irish. <clears throat> I don't know if you are aware of this. The Irish are the ones that use last names as first names. First names. 
So you'll find that in their families. You'll see, like an Ellis Sifton, if you go back, his his grandmother was her maiden name was probably Ellis. Okay. So you you find a lot of that happening. So you you find a what seems like it should be a last name is a first name because they've they've used the maiden the um, and that's one way of carrying the uh, the uh, female. Last names, right. Last names well, I think that's where, um, like, our Victoria Cross winner, um, Ellis Wellwood Sifton. I think the Wellwood is someone's <coughs> yes, last is. name. Yeah, yes. in yeah. his ancestry. Yeah. Um, and just in the book, it doesn't say about the Ellis part of it. But yeah. I think, I think, having read his biography, I think that's. Yes. I think we're right. Yeah. Um, it's just not in here. Yeah. yeah. It'll be in volume two. <laughs> <laughs> the West Elgin Genealogical and Historical Society. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'd like, not just me, but everyone, maybe, what you know of the beginning of it and a bit of the history, um, yeah. because we've only yeah. just merged, um, the, the yeah. Turcono yeah. Heritage Society, we've only just merged in 2020. Yes. Yeah. So, before that... Before um, that, I th it was around 1979, I think, that um, Duncan McKillop... Duncan C. McKillop? Uh, Just uh, to make sure? Duncan, lawyer Duncan, yes. Lawyer Duncan, okay, yes. <laughs> well, there's a lot of McKillops, too. Well, and that, and that <laughs> yes, in the, in the area, everybody has to have a, if, if you're yeah. Duncan McKillop, you need a, another, another lawyer, identifier. Lawyer so, Duncan C. McKillop. So lawyer, lawyer Duncan Coulter mm -hmm. McKillop. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, got together with, I think, Donald Carroll was another, yeah. one of the original ones, and I think they showed up one day at Norma Steckenberger's um, to have a meeting and that that was the the start of the West Elgin Genealogical and Historical Society and it's and if if, if if you look at a lot of these societies a lot of them are either historical or genealogical. There's the Ontario Genealogical Society and Ontario Historical Society. This one sort of combines the two so it's one of the few ones that has that uh, That's uh, true combination of history and genealogy. So mm -hmm. so they started off and yes, and Norma Steckenberger and Jean Georgievich, uh, the two sisters, yeah. which were high school my high school teachers. The other sister who taught history, Audrey Miller, didn't get involved in the historical society, which was interesting. But yeah, so those um, Don Carroll was one of the founding members, Alice Patterson mm -hmm. and their and Don Patterson were other ones that were yeah. Alice Patterson is descendant of um, the Campbell, the Florida Campbell, from McAlpin and um, Donald Campbell. From your reunion. From my reunion. So she's one of my relatives. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then she she was one of the Turcono Heritage Society um, founding members yes. as well. Yes. Um, so she's kept a great yeah. notebook on how Saving the Bacchus Page House Museum mm -hmm. came from the West Elgin Genealogical yes. and Historical Society. Yeah. And so, so yeah, yeah, we started off, we used to have our meetings at the high school in uh, West uh, Lauren because we had oh. high school teachers there. We could, we, we originally we had uh, meetings there, and then when they built the new John Kenneth Galbraith Library in Dutton, they had a, a room there we could use for meetings, and we and they had a, an upstairs resource room. So we got moved our material there and have, we had our meetings there for a number of years until because they used to give us the key and we go in on Sunday and open up and then they put in a security system and and got in all these rules and we couldn't all of a sudden we couldn't do it on Sundays so we met for a short time at the Daffodil uh, Yes, on the yeah. on the side of the seniors, yeah. like the adult yeah. center yeah. on Main Street in Dutton, because that's yeah. the first time I went yeah. to a meeting. Yes, was that's where you were meeting there. Yes, and then we sort of things sort of died out. Yeah. Now, when you when did you first started start going? In the eighties, sometime I don't remember exactly okay. when. But, um, um, and how many people yeah. were sort of going on a regular basis when you first started? Well, there were twenty twenty five. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. I mean, my connection back in Payne's Mills was where Donald, or, um, Duncan McKillops, they lived at Frome. Mm -hmm. um, so he um, used to go to church with his, his um, son, Duncan 
and, and actually um, public school. I was in Duncan's class, in uh, Duncan Junior's class in right. public school at Payne's Mills. Yeah. So that was my connection with the McKillop family. We used to be, my mother was friends with uh, um, Mrs. McKillop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we knew the family from there. Right, and then you heard, oh, they have the society, and yes, yeah, so and it it actually covered um, both historically Dunwich Township and Alderborough Township, which is now West yeah. Algon and Dutton Dunwich, and, um, a, and a bit of South Hold. Hold. Yeah, because because originally, if you look in the census, like West Algon is South Hold, Dunwich, and Alderborough. Right, and we do too, yeah. kind of get into South Hold. Um, yeah as well. And what were some of the things that, when you first started going in the 80s, that they had going on at meetings um, oh, we always or used projects? To have, uh, speakers. Um, yeah, so that was one of the challenges of getting, it was a program, it was about 10 meetings a year, mm -hmm. and we'd have programs, there would be a like a Christmas uh, potluck dinner, but other than that, there were speakers for most programs. Uh, um, yeah, we bring it like from around, um, mm -hmm. just on sort of local history, or um, they did, well, they did the cemetery transcriptions. That was one of the things that the group did. They went around to all the local cemeteries and transcribed all the uh, um, gravestones, mm -hmm. which is a lot of work. So it was, Massive project. Yeah. Yeah, and we're thankful <clears throat> yes. that it was done, right? Because some of the stones aren't legible now. They've fallen over and disappeared, so, so that was... That was a good project. Yeah. Uh, there was Keith Kelly who did the postal history. Uh, right. Um, Is he the same Keith Kelly who tracked the weather? Yes. All the okay. Yes. So we, we used to joke, we asked Keith Kelly what the weather's going to be like for the next while. So Keith and Marie Kelly were uh, um, long standing members too. Okay. Alice and Don Patterson. So yeah, so we. Uh, but then I guess we started the Dunwich. History book project in the 1990s, I guess. That was going to be my next question: yes. is when when did you yeah. start planning and organizing? Because it's published yes. 2004. Yes. It's copyrighted. So and yeah, about the time we moved to Dutton, so maybe 95 or so, mm -hmm. somewhere in there, we got seriously into it. And, yeah. And now we're seriously into volume two. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of work. Goes in. It does take about twenty years to to pick it together one of these uh, books. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and Yvonne McCollum. Yes. Uh, was there, and yeah. then I recall Harley and Nancy Lashbrook. Yes. Were there because yes. he had the newspapers. Yeah. West Lauren and Rodney. Yes. Yeah, he had both yes. newspapers. West Lauren's son, Rodney Mercury. They did. Yeah. They both, and he'd written the book on Alboro. Yes. Yeah. So there was that. Connection. Yeah, so we we did have a lot of people. We had people from Glencoe too coming in. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Betty Simpson was one. Yeah. Yes, because she's a Pierce yeah. descendant. Yeah. Um, yeah, and now we're finding that um, we're trying to get all those groups working together again because we're all smaller. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, yeah. there's sort of five or six people in each of these little groups yes. instead of 20 to 25. Yeah, I mean, one of the challenges is trying to get new members coming in because uh, yeah, people are busy doing a lot of things. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's, there's a lot, it's interesting with the DNA research and, uh, and the internet, there's a lot more interest now in uh, connections and family histories. So, yeah. yeah it's, uh, and things are available on the internet. I mean, when I first started doing Scottish family research, you went to the register house in Edinburgh and they brought out the old um, parish registers, the actual registers, and you put your gloves on and you, and you had your pencil and you went through the actual books. That was, yeah. that didn't last very long until they went cut into micro film. But yeah, originally you'd have to look at the original records. And you, no. <clears throat> you could take a picture, but you didn't know if it turned out till you produced your film. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not like now. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was a. Now you can just go on the internet and look everything up. Well. Not most things. Most yeah. Yes. Most things. Not everything's 
totally on the internet. Which or is why we still have libraries. Or it's not free, yes. That's true, yes. Yes. Were there any other organizations similar to our, well, what, our genealogical society that you that I belong to? joined to? Not joined? really, no. Okay. Just, I mean, there, well, I'm, I'm a member of the Ontario... Um, genealogical uh, society. society. Yes. Yeah. I've been a member for over 40 years. Okay. And then you... Then you would belong to the Algin branch. No, I never, I never actually belonged oh, okay. to the Algin branch. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, because Duncan was also, he was part of the Elgin mm. Historical yes. Society, yes. founding member. Yeah. And then, and then he was early here as well with Alice Patterson um, for Turconnell yes. Heritage yes. Society. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember yeah. all my. <laughs> all yes, my I was things. actually I was looking through some old files I had and. I mean, some of the meetings when they originally talked about doing this, the Connell Heritage Society. So the meetings of the West Elgin group yes. talking about here? Yeah. Oh, we need, I'll I should, see. yeah. Just to make sure we yeah. have copies of those. I think we do, because yeah. we have a lot of Duncan's binders. Yes. Um, and then Alice was great to have this notebook that she, I don't know if she was writing it as it was happening or shortly thereafter she put it all together. Yeah. Um, but it was, I think, I think the West Elgin Genealogical and Historical Society heard the house was in jeopardy in March, and by June, there were, there, they had keys, and an open house was happening, and yep. stuff was in the paper. Yep. Yeah. The, the original group here was, they were on it. Yes, well, I mean, yeah. people like Donald Carroll and Alice Patterson, they, yeah. they were very interested in the history, and they devoted a lot of effort. Oh, mm -hmm. hours, hours of their time, mm -hmm. and I, I know, I know money, and yeah, um, they, and I hope that, you know, they're gone now. But if they can yeah. see what's happened, they're, yes. you know, they're pleased with yeah. with where we're headed now. Did your mom do any? Did she enjoy like flower gardening and ornamental stuff? Yeah, she, at the farm, we, we always had um, sort of dahlias and. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, not so much roses, but uh, um, things like yeah, you know, sweet williams and okay. you know, perennials, different. Yeah, yeah, and then I mean, yeah. everyone had a vegetable garden. Well, we, I, mean, I remember we had <laughs> we had strawberries. Ooh, we used we used to have a large patch of strawberries, and and uh, you're you're too young to remember these days, but people didn't have freezers in their house. Oh. There was, but there was a cold storage in the towns. So we would put our strawberries in the containers, take them into St. Thomas, and we'd have a locker in the cold storage freezer in St. Thomas. Where in St. Thomas was it? Oh, somewhere off Thomas Street. But there used to be one in okay. Dutton. Too. There was one in Dutton? Yeah, down the street past where the library is now. So when we moved up here, that's where we, so we would take our, anything we wanted frozen, we take it in there and store it in there. And then in the wintertime, um, when you get the good groceries, you went to your locker and got your uh, frozen food out. Right. Yeah. Anything else you remember about Wallace Town or Dutton, like businesses in the, in oh, the 60s? Oh, I mean, there used, there used, to be the, uh, used to be a feed mill in, uh, in Wallace Town. We used to bring in uh, grain to get oats to get ground um, in, the chop, in the chop at the um, Rose mill. Street? Yes, I think Behind Tall Tales is Rose yes. Street. Yes, back yeah. in that. Okay. Yeah, there was that. Um, yeah, the flour mill. Flour Well, yeah, we it was a we we ground stuff for the for the animals. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, fairgrounds, obviously. Oh and yes, Wallace Town Fair. Yeah. Remember, in Dutton, the uh, lumber yard, Saunders lumber yard. Where was that? Well, Main Street runs through it now. Main Street used to... Main Street, when you came into Dutton, mm -hmm. at the end of Main Street, past the uh, town hall there, was Saunders Lumberyard. You couldn't drive. You could not drive through there. <coughs> you had to jog around it. I never really thought about what was there <coughs> past <coughs> past the town hall. Across from the town hall was... Across was Bennett Motors. Bennett, Bennett Motors, yes. Or actually Miller... Miller, Miller Motors. 
Bennett had the farm. Bennett did the Ford. Yes. Tractors. Miller had the uh, uh, GM dealership. The cars. The cars. Right. Yeah.